been a while. Uh, but you don't know that because the videos are there whether I am or not, so that's kind of cool. I'm Jack Van Preen from Guitar Showcase in San Jose, California. Talking to you, obviously, on TotallyGuitars.com, unless you're catching this on YouTube, too, on the TotallyGuitars.com link. Uh, and what I have just had the extreme pleasure is a 1920s-ish Hawaiian guitar. This is the real deal, and kind of the grandfather of a whole lot of music. Uh, hopefully you recognize that song, which I don't know the name of, but everybody recognizes. And this is the guitar it was played on, and created in the islands. And uh, the Halleys came over from the, the, the States and found this instrument and thought it was really cool, and it really took off, because it's a very melodic. <laughs> You can play a lot of neat chord inversions and stuff. And so it really took on it and we're being played in the orchestras. And um, as you can tell, it's not a very loud instrument. But it's got a sweet sound. But, uh, and we did this all before with the Rickenbacker story, but there was a guy who was playing one of these in the orchestra and he couldn't be heard. And this is before the days of multi-channel mixers and microphones and he went to some guys uh, the DePera brothers and said I need to be louder and around that time that they were doing this which was the late 20s early 30s dates escaped me I was a terrible history student loudspeakers were being invented you know singer would stand up at a microphone and electrically we'd go to these big speakers that would vibrate and fill the room. And the DePera brothers and this guy came up with the idea, if we could put a speaker in the guitar, replacing this wood surface that's pretty stiff and vibrates a little, we could put a speaker in there, it'll probably vibrate a lot. And I don't have the exact history I gather, they probably tried a, a speaker first, but paper being what it is, the strings just went whack, ripped right through the cone. So they, they came up with an aluminum cone, which we'll get some shots later, and that works really well. You got a lot more volume. And I teamed up with some other cats, and uh, they thought, you know, wood is pretty good, but they came up with this design of a steel body to try and give it even more volume. And this is one of those nationals from those days. And sometimes you'll hear about Resophonic Dobro or National Tricone. And this actually has, instead of one big cone, three smaller cones. that this is actually even louder than the wood body dobro with this single cone and clearly louder than this gorgeous Hawaiian guitar that's all wood. You'll notice I'm playing them all lap style. That's kind of the style that evolved. But some people couldn't adapt to that. So they get a regular resophonic with a round neck and they play it like this. tonality. Part of it is the strings closer to the neck have a different tension across the bridge which has a different tension on the on the comb. A lot of different things. But this is a Fender version of the Resophonic guitar. It is not a Dobro. Just because it has a comb doesn't make it a Dobro. Dobro is a particular brand. And rightly so, they're very uh, jealous of that, so we call these resophonics. We call the National a tricone, and we call the Dobro a Dobro. 
And it all comes back to this beautiful, I'm going to play this one a lot on this segment because it's not mine. I'm not even going to tell you who it belongs to because he wants it a secret so it will stay in the family instead of somebody coming and borrowing it. Beautiful song, some of you hopefully will recognize as Sleepwalk, a very popular tune in the 50s and 60s, somewhere around there. Played on a steel guitar. 